Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show today. Well, this Cricket Happening Show is with a difference today uh, because what I'm going to look at is we are, we are on the innings break right now in the fifth and final one day international uh, of this Natos one day series, which is, is the decider, which will decide which uh, team is going to take the Natos one day international trophy because uh, the series is leveled at 1 1. Well, Australia have finished off very strongly uh, with a score of 298 tanks in the main. Uh, to a 163 run partnership uh, for the fourth wicket uh, in 22.1 overs between the Austri Australian captain uh, Michael Clark and Shane Watson who slammed 141 delightful runs and also Michael Clark was absolutely in his element as far as stroke making was concerned and also England had a hero with Ben Stokes uh, returning a maiden five wicket haul of uh, five wickets uh, in this particular match. Uh, we'll look at that uh, and basically what I'm going to look, I'm not going to, uh, the reason that, I, I mean, uh, due to shortage of time today, I'm not sure whether I'll be in a position to uh, give you the full match report. Well, if time permitting, definitely I'll be coming back to you and speaking to you about the English progress. Uh, you can, if at all you want to know, you can always catch up on my Twitter, uh, where I tweeted about uh, the Aussies batting there. You can uh, look at me on that. Uh, well. Uh, so Australia finished strongly as I said and then tomorrow the Champions League T20 kicks off as you know uh, and that is going to be the qualifiers, it is not the tournament proper which is going to be played in India in 2013 and the first match is between the Faisalabad Bulls and Otago Bulls uh, so that is something, so we'll, I'll have a general look at the uh, Champions League uh, T20 not in a big way because in the main I'll be covering the Australian, um, Australian innings uh, in this fifth one day international, the Natos one day uh, series. And then we look at some cricket news where the New Zealand team has been chosen for the tour of Bangladesh. Well, so first let's uh, head off to the uh, fifth one day international match uh, and the fifth and final one day international match which is going to bring an end to the series between Australia and England. Uh, and this is the Natos series which was played today at the Rose Bowl in Southampton. Australia uh, were the ones who actually won the toss. It was a good toss to win and uh, immediately uh, Australian captain uh, Michael Clark decided that he'll be batting first which was the right decision and for England uh, one, one was looking out for this uh, there were a lot of uh, talks going on whether Chris Jordan would make his uh, one day international debut well he did Chris Jordan definitely made his one day international debut and also bowled well I thought uh, barring a few short pitch ones but uh, short ones are something uh, that he bowls with uh, customary regularity and that also fetched him wickets and at the same time he also leaked some runs on that short delivery but he generated lots of pace and he was uh, quite impressive uh, beating the bat uh, uh, many a time. Well, so looking at this innings, Australia started off with their openers Phil Hughes and Aaron Fetch and uh, th in the third over uh, Chris Jordan struck uh, by getting his maiden wicket and it was an early test of success for Chris Jordan as he made Phil Hughes go for a, a sort of a, a hook pull shot uh, and uh, which only ended, it was a short delivery from Jordan which I said he used it uh, in a very nice manner and which also leaked a lot of runs and also uh, fetched him a lot of wickets and uh, this was the first one uh, made in a uh, wicket for Chris Jordan as uh, Phil Hughes was uh, caught in a real triangle uh, trying to hook uh, um, uh, Michael, uh, Chris Jordan and uh, Carberry taking a very easy catch. So that is the first wicket to go. Phil Hughes caught Carberry bowled Jordan for two of uh, nine deliveries. So that made the score 13 for one and then uh, there was a bit of a, a real, I would say, a sort of a brief recovery by Aaron Finch and uh, Shane Watson with Aaron Finch uh, peppering the offside field uh, with lots of boundaries. In fact, in his score of 26, he had six boundaries and then uh, there was a brief um, a delay uh, in, in play uh, with the rain coming in uh, and it was a passing shower but uh, definitely that interrupted the proceedings and probably also disturbed the concentration of the batsman as has been as he seemed to be uh, in uh, cricket and what happened was that Ben Stokes was the one who actually took advantage of it uh, by immediately after the break he had Aaron Finch uh, stroking one more ball through the offside uh, trying to hit it through point but Morgan t uh, took that flyer from uh, Aaron Finch and he was gone for 26 of the bowling of Ben Stokes of 32 balls with six fours and Shane Watt and the next wicket to go Matthew Wade uh, was out the very next delivery he walked in at the fall of uh, Finch's wicket and left as, as, uh, as quickly as he came as uh, Matthew Wade trying to hook a ball it was a bouncer from Stokes uh, which he tried to hook it and he hooked it and only got an um, 
edge onto it and Butler behind the stumps uh, took a easy catch and he was gone for a blob and uh, Matthew Wade was actually promoted to the batting order which uh, really didn't pay any dividend as he was walking with the Australian innings suddenly um, looking a bit shaky at 48 for 3. Uh, Michael Clark, the captain joined Shane Watson and after that uh, it was um, uh, it, it was uh, really I would say it was uh, a situation where uh, the Australian batsman Shane Watson and Mac Michael Clark had to go through that tough period. They definitely did that, and they also noticed that uh, you know Michael Clark noticed that the pitch was easy to bat on. It's easy to uh, play the strokes, and that's what uh, precisely they did. In fact, uh, both of them uh, started uh, stroking freely. Uh, especially Shane Watson was very very aggressive. Was, I mean, uh, stroking fours and smoking sixes, and he was using his feet well to the spinners too. And uh, Michael Clark was a very, very, very classy knock in the sense uh, he was, uh, the ball was hitting the sweet part of the bat. He was uh, driving very well. At the other hand, uh, Watson was uh, punching the ball well. He was driving well. Uh, he was pulling well. And uh, as far as Clark was concerned, you know, he has the deft touch uh, and anything on the legs he used to neatly flick it. And he was uh, looking. And both of them uh, slowly started gaining in confidence. Uh, and started uh, getting runs with the spinners uh, put into operation. Uh, James Treadwell was, um, uh, I mean, James Treadwell, as you know, in this one-day series, he has not done very well, too. Every time he has got a lot of tap from um, um, Bailey, uh, the informed batsman. But today it was the turn of Shane Watson uh, to give it to Shane Watson and Michael Clark to give it to Treadwell. And Treadwell was removed out of the attack, and he bowled four overs for 38 runs and never bowled in this match. Uh, and uh, Joe Root was also brought in because of uh, James Treadwell not really uh, uh, delivering the goods. And uh, Joe Root was also taken to the cleaners uh, by both uh, Michael Clark and Watson. Watson in particular uh, slamming sixes at will. Uh, and, also, uh, and so this partnership started blossoming and started blossoming in a pretty good fashion. As uh, the, the, from, from a score of 48 for 3 where Australia was struggling, uh, the score uh, had galloped to 211 for four, 11 for three, uh, thanks to a, a wonderful 163-run partnership, which was a scintillating partnership in 22 overs, uh, with um, Australia really, really keeping up to the run rate of uh, probably more than six runs per over at that particular rate, and uh, that really, really uh, gave uh, Australia uh, a very good platform to launch. And they were, uh, they were looking at a score of uh, 350 odd at that stage when the score was at 211 for three. But uh, then um, uh, Jordan came in and Jordan uh, initially uh, had Michael Clark uh, dropped off the very first delivery he bowled uh, when Rankin actually dropped the sitter. Uh, but uh, well, Jordan, in fact, uh, uh, Michael Clark couldn't really benefit from that because Jordan's last delivery says that the short delivery is definitely uh, pitching... Um, um, I mean, getting uh, Jordan wickets with, because of his uh, very good pace that he generates, and that was precisely the case. My, Michael Clark in the batting power play, uh, trying to uh, pull Jordan, uh, ended up in the hands of Peterson. And after playing a wonderful innings, as I said, he was looking in fine touch with his knock of 75 of 76 balls with 10 fours and one six. That made the score 211 for four, and uh, that is the time, as I said, Australia were looking good uh, for a score of 350 or and over. And suddenly Shane Watson uh, got the company, I mean George Bailey came in, as you know he was the man in form, has been in the form in this particular series, but uh, suddenly wicket started uh, falling for uh, Australia as uh, the first goal was uh, Bailey, as uh, Bailey was a uh, victim of uh, Joe Root as he tried to actually hawk him down the leg side uh, and Butler behind the stumps, uh, uh, you know, uh, whipping off the bales and he was gone for four of 14 deliveries. Uh, the next wicket to go over Adam Vogues, uh, as uh, Stokes came in and picked up his wicket, Adam Vogues was caught by Butler of the bowling of Stokes for 8, uh, and that made the score 244 for 6. And then um, uh, Shane Watson suddenly, as I said, got into top gear with only a few overs, probably uh, 6 or 7 overs left, uh, 6 overs left, uh, I reckon. And uh, Shane Watson really got, uh, you know, what he did is he really got uh, hooked onto Joe Root, by hitting him for 28 runs uh, in an over of uh, Joe Root, where he hit three sixes uh, and uh, two fours, uh, and uh, Shane Watson galloped to 143 of 107 balls with 12 fours and six sixes, and the man of the moment was Stokes, who came in and uh, picked up the wicket of Watson, with Watson trying to go aerial uh, on, on Stokes' bowling, uh, got the edge onto it, Butler behind the stumps did the rest, 
uh, and uh, he was gone for 143 of 107 balls, 12 fours and 6 sixes. This was his 8th one day international century. After that uh, it was uh, pretty tough going. Suddenly from the score when it was looking uh, after Watson actually ransacked 28 runs of the uh, uh, route over, it was looking at 350, uh, everything vanished as uh, Watson's wicket was gone uh, for 282. And after that it was a matter of, of survival for Australia, uh, which uh, Faulkner had to do something out of it. And then uh, it, was not, it was pretty tough going for Australia as wicket started falling uh, pretty regularly with uh, Mitchell Johnson uh, giving catching practice to Stokes, trying to work the ball on the onside, spooning the ball and Stokes taking the catch and Stokes was absolutely joyful and why not it was his first it was a maiden five wicket haul in one day international career Clint McKay uh, was out for five caught root ball rank in Father Diamond was not out uh, with one boundary that he hit and that was it uh, Faulkner was the man to go caught Butler ball Jordan for 10 of 19 balls and Australia uh, from a position where they looked uh, uh, first, first struggling then looking at a total of 350 finally finished at 298 all out Looking at the bowling figures, Rankin was very, very impressive. He continues to be impressive in this uh, one-day series. Uh, 9.1 overs, one maiden, 26 runs on one, one wicket. He generated a lot of bounce on this wicket. One for 26 for him, bowled splendidly. Chris Jordan on his uh, one-day international debut, very impressive with 10 overs, no maiden, 51 runs on three wickets, generating a lot of pace and uh, using the short ones to good effect. Ben Stokes, uh, the bowler of the day today, uh, getting his uh, maiden uh, five-wicket haul in his one-day international career, uh, leaking 61 runs, but in the bargain picking up five wickets, which was very important. Bupara, 10 overs, none for 54, and the spinners uh, were, were taken to the cleaners. Treadwell continued his uh, unimpressive form in this uh, Natural's one-day trophy series, four overs, none for 38, and Joe Root, six overs, costing him 58 runs and one wicket. Now, as I said, the innings break right now. The pitch is looking good. And 299 to win for England uh, should not be, I mean, I wouldn't say it should be, uh, it should be tough. Uh, looking at where the Australians played, uh, I can say that uh, this pitch looks easy to bat on and uh, England should fancy themselves. But uh, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting battle on the cards here uh, at, um, at Southampton in Hampshire. So uh, let's keep an eye on that. As I said, uh, I am not sure whether I'll be getting time today. But, uh, well, if I get time, uh, your host, Ram, would definitely be there uh, to talk to you about the uh, reply that England would be making uh, to in the chase of uh, 298 set by Australia in the fifth one-day international. Uh, well, the other than that, as I said, uh, tomorrow it's going to be, very briefly, I'm going to cover because uh, the majority of the portion has been, uh, as, uh, was covering the Australia-England match. Well, tomorrow, as you know, the Champions League T20 kicks off in India in 2013. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are initially going to have, uh, um, you know, we are going to have the qualifying matches uh, for at least uh, three days. That is on September 17, uh, 18 and 20. Uh, tomorrow the first match, two matches are going to be played tomorrow. One is the qualifying group, the Faisalabad Bulls from Pakistan, who finally got a visa to India. And uh, they have been led by Ms. Baal Haq, the uh, Pakistan captain. And uh, they would be taking on... Otago Wolves of New Zealand tomorrow at the Punjab Cricket Association Stadium, Mohali, in Chandigarh. And the second qualifying group would be Kandurata Maroons uh, of Sri Lanka, led by uh, Kumar Sangakra, and Sunrisers Hyderabad would be led by, uh, of India, uh, would be led by uh, Shikhar Dhawan, uh, the form batsman and the star of the Indian cricket team. And as far as uh, other teams are concerned, uh, well, as I said, these are the three teams uh, which are vying for a qualifying group. This is the qualifying group. So from this, uh, they will start, uh, this will be the qualifying matches which would be played. And then we come to the match proper on, uh, I think it would be on 21st of September. So, well, dear fans, uh, friends, subscribers, that is as far as the Champions League is concerned. Very quickly before I go, uh, just wanting to talk to you about the New Zealand uh, Bangladesh series which is coming up. Bangladesh uh, would be taking on New Zealand. New Zealand would be touring uh, uh, Bangladesh. And, the, and they're going to be playing uh, one-day internationals over there, test matches and one-day internationals. And uh, what, um, what uh, uh, New Zealand have done is they have got a new player by the name uh, Anton Davis, who played very well against the, when he was playing for New Zealand Day against India, he very slam centuries, and he got some uh, very useful runs there. So he has been included. He's a, he's a, he's a left-hand uh, opening batsman. He's also a very aggressive batsman too. So he has been included. Other than that is Brendan McClellan, the captain, uh, Anton Davis, Grant Elliott, Tom Latham, 
Mitchell McLenahan, Nathan McCallum, Kyle Mills, Adam Mend, the pace bowler, Colin Munro, Jimmy Nisham, Hamish Rutherford, Tim Saudi, Ross Taylor and Kane Williamson. So this is the uh, team composition uh, as far as um, the New Zealand team is concerned uh, for the tour of Bangladesh which starts on 4th of October. Uh, and um, he's just 27, year of, 27 years of age, Anton Davesich. So that is another news that I wanted to cover. Uh, there's no place for, uh, Daniel Ritter is out with the injury, Tim Saudi out with the injury, uh, and there's no place for uh, Luke Cronchy or James Franklin. Well, dear fans, friends, subscribers, on this particular note, I would like to end my cricket happening show. For just now, I would like to tell you something that England have just started their reply here uh, at the Rose Bowl in Southampton with this uh, little cricket update. I'm going to end it. Michael Carberry has taken that single. He's not out on one. Kevin Peterson is not out on not. Three balls have been bowled in this England innings, and they are one for no loss after three deliveries. With this uh, little cricket update, your host Ram is ending the cricket show for today. But promising you, if at all, if at all time permitting, you will once again seeing me uh, on this cricket show today, uh, speaking about the uh, England uh, pursuit uh, of uh, 298. How how the pursuit was um, as far as uh, this match is concerned. Other than that, nothing else to share for now. Thanks for your company and thanks for watching Cricket Happenings. Your host Ram uh, is signing off for the signing off for now. Thank you.